Hello friends. This long-awaited update of the Repricer Pro add-on contains many fixes and innovations. In this video I want to review the most important ones. A list of all changes, as always, is available on the release list tab in our store or in the documentation in the corresponding section. So the first change is the new reporting functionality. We have added the ability to generate reports on selected products and competitors for a specific period of time. The breakdown setting allows you to split the exported file into separate tabs depending on the option selected. It can be by date or by product. Additionally, you can flexibly configure such parameters as date and table formats, specify which attribute of the product will participate, as well as generate a report sending it to the specified email or FTP. Generation of reports can be performed both manually and automatically using a cron task. The add-on also has a page with a small documentation of working with all the cron tasks available. In the file, we see a list of all dates for the period selected in the settings. Dates, which there is a data for, are available as links to detailed pages. And the file itself is divided by dates on the tabs, since when generating the report, we selected the appropriate option. The next change is the new type of export and import links with competitor products. It allows you to quickly assign competitor to a needed product. Let's create an export file, replace for example the product ID and import it back. Now as we can see the product with ID 183 does not have a single connector competitor. Let's add them using the import file. We changed the ID in the file. Let's now go to the Data Import tab, Repricer Pro and upload the file. Thus, we have added the competitor we need to this product using import functionality we see that competitors have appeared on the Monitoring and Dynamic Pricing tab. The next very important change is to simplify the parsing process of products that are variations. On the Competitors Editing page, we added a tab with additional parameters that can be used as variables in the parsing rules. Let's take a closer look at this on the test product. For example, a competitor sells a chair, which in turn has variability based on size. That is, there are variations of this product based on size with their prices, which we want to parse and compare with prices for variations of our product in our store. The important point is that when you switch to any variation, the link remains the same. And in this case, this innovation comes to help. As we can see, the class of these two variations differs in one word, which we will create a variable for. Let's call it size, for example. Let the default value be big, for example. Now, by substituting such placeholder in the price attribute parsing value, its value will be different for different variations. The rule itself looks like this. Search by CSS selector and in the right place of the selector, instead of a specific value, we simply substitute this placeholder. That's all. It only remains to indicate which values it should take. Let's open our main product and its variation by size. Now on the monitoring and pricing tab, by editing the associated competitor, we can select the value that will be used for this variable. Our main product is a small chair, which means we need to match it with the same variation of this chair on the competitor's website. For our variation with the big chair size, let's compare the same competitor with the same link, but we'll indicate the value of this variable as big. 
let's parse these two products manually now and see the correct result. Thus, instead of creating a separate duplicates of competitors with separate rules for parsing attributes, it has now became possible to conveniently parse products with variations using one rule, simply substituting a placeholder into it, which will contain variable values depending on your needs. The last innovation that I would like to highlight in this video is the ability to use third-party services, the so-called web scrapers, to bypass various logs and other unwanted types of protection against downloading the HTML code of competitors' pages. In general, the following scheme of the approach to parsing competitors can be distinguished. The first step is to use a standard scraper. Then, if we cannot get the page content, use paid proxies which increase the chance of downloading the code. And finally, if we still cannot get the page code using the previous two methods, we can use third-party scrapers. There is currently one third-party then scrape service available for use, but very soon support for another five services will be added. On the web scrapers management page, you can specify the API key and select the required number of parallel requests based on the package you selected as well as track your balance of available credits. Now, using the standard CURL scraper, we will not be able to get the source code of the page of this example site. We see error 403, which tells us about the high probability of installed protection on the competitor's website. Now, let's try to get the page code using the proxy server. Let's go to the proxy management page and add a new one. Now, let's download the competitor's site code again. The error did not go away. But now, having changed the scraper to then scrape and choosing the additional settings, we can finally parse this site. But keep in mind that by choosing these additional settings, the number of credits increases. Let's re-download the HTML code and see a positive result. This improvement will allow you to easily bypass various protection on competitors' websites. Yeah.